Nate the Gray here with Everything Residential on a beautiful Friday. Today's task is converting this here window into some French doors. So let's roll it from the top and stay tuned. So here's the details and uh, the best way to execute. We will be getting our grinder grinding straight down to eliminate stucco repair. We're trying to save the homeowner money here. As you can see, the water spigot and the outlet are on the outside of the window frame. Therefore, we're probably in good luck. Water spigot goes up or down. This probably goes up or down because it's exterior bouncing around over there. We do have an outlet on the inside we will address, but pretty much we're going down Removing the bottom part, our header is good to go. It's already in place and we're just going to pop a French door. Let's go on the inside and show you some details. So you want to make sure we plastic everything off, protecting the new furniture. And we can't forget about the kids' Legos. Very important. Don't want to get dust in there and clog it up when you're Lego building. Got some tarps down. We have a tile floor, so we're not going to scratch it. So we just put tarps down or else we put ram board down. But here you go. Here's the opening, like I said, the header's good. Electrical is over here. Now let's take a look at this electrical outlet. This is the end of the line right here. So here's our load coming in, or technically the line coming in right here. And uh, this is the end of it. It's not, you know, what do you call it? Pigtailing or, uh, it's not going bouncing off to the other outlet. So therefore, we can eliminate this, but we don't know where it's coming from. This power could be coming from that outlet or it could be coming from this outlet. And so we need to either open this up and open that outlet up and then do a continuity test or a resistance test to find out which one it is, cut it and pull it and uh, eliminate it. So sometimes you can run into situations where power comes in and it piggybacks off and now you put your door in and there's you have to run a wire up into the attic and over because the header is filling up the top space. Luckily, we're not dealing with that so it's gonna be an easy one. So let's get a time lapse started. See you on the other side. So Nate the Great's exposing our rough framing, and that way we could just get a sawzall and cut it right down. So that's what he's doing. Take that from you. Hey, what's up, little guy?
Okay, can't emphasize this enough. We got our rough opening ready to go for the door. But just vacuuming the sill is not good enough. You gotta get it wet, okay? And you gotta actually get water on it. And then get this, get all the dirt off of it. That way you're gonna have to get this more wet. And like you see this high hump right there, you see that? That's gonna 100% affect the door. We're gonna have to get our grinder and grind that. That's a big old hump right there and that will make our door not shut correctly. You guys can actually see that. So let's get the grinder out again and uh, let's get to grinding. So with French doors being level, it's crucial. So right here, that's level there. Small gap. You can see there's a, a split in the slab right here. So uh, if you come over here, that's just a bad one. That's not too bad, you come over here though. See that? which means when this thing's perfectly level, we're gonna have to shim it. That's all that means. I don't like shims because it makes it higher. You have to use like a lot of caulk and it just shimming it, you know, isn't the best thing. The best thing is to have a perfectly level slab, but you never have a perfectly level slab and the world ain't perfect. So we do what we do. We have our frame in, roughed up, just the shell of it. Nathan's going in and pre-drilling right where the gasket goes to make it solid and so you don't see it. I uh, also want to show you this, guys. Oh, we talked about the concrete bit on level. Let me grab this thing from your first night when you're done. Thank you, sir. That's it right there. We got it as close as we can. You can see that this is actually perfect right here when you lift it up, you know, a quarter inch over there. That's perfect. Anyways, we got shims on this side. Shows you how it's like super unlevel, the concrete. And you can see it's probably because of the crack. It's settled right there. Shim it up. The reason I don't like shims is because it creates a gap underneath the threshold. So when you step, so we'll have to really load it with caulk so when it dries and tell nobody to step on it when it dries, it dries solid. All right, back to the time lapse. Using big globs because of the shims.
Ready? Let's get a good level of foam. I like this. It's my favorite part. Oh, baby. Can't see, man. Can't see. Oh, oh. You're leaking. Call him Leaky McGee. Leaky McGee. Can't you see? G A P. Gap filler. Reminds me of grandma's pudding. Mm. Okay, door is installed. Let me show you how we installed this. The GoPro died, of course, so we're gonna make do with what we got. Okay. So when the jam was in, what we did was we put a screw on the top here and a screw on the top here to hold the jam, okay? Once the jam was in, we hung our doors on the pin. And essentially what we did is we just kept manipulating the door with shims until the gap, it, until it closed and until it was like correctly gapped, if that makes sense. Top and bottom. The concrete's wicked on level. Let me show you how many shims we had to use here. You don't see it. That's how much we had to shim it just this side and it still wasn't perfect so we shimmed it and now it closes and feels really good okay so we got our door installed a couple stipulations on the door manufacturer let's take a look at this real quick door goes in smoothly look at this nice and clean everything about it's good you saw the foundation they have a crack in the foundation making the actual concrete really uneven by about a half an inch other than that the door goes in so really nicely trims up it's all foamed and done complete here's the stipulation the people who install these doors and cut these holes out the distance from here to the center of the hole needs to be two and three eighths to two and three quarter right now it's two inches they don't sell any type of door hardware at any store that works for two inches also if you look at it if you could see it when they were cutting these holes they cut it at the wrong location if you could see that and then filled the hole. So what happened is, is that somebody's on the job site, smoking the ganja, and made a couple mistakes. And uh, it cost the customer. Well, he's working with Home Depot right now to get it resolved. But come outside and let's look on the outside here. Once again, I wanna reiterate how smooth that is. Everything about it's smooth and it sits flush. Here is our door trim. He wanted to do rough pine. There is a smooth pine, but he wanted a rough pine to match the other si other door to your right. So, as you see that, we have our uh, kick out. And once again, we're gonna just cut some two by fours down with a table saw. You sand it, caulk it, and paint it, it's gonna come out real nice, especially with the screen doors that get installed. We're holding off on the screen doors though, because we could essentially remove this whole door if Home Depot replaces the door. So we might have to come back here and tear this out and do a whole new one, but that's on the manufacturer, not us. Anyways, here at Everything Residential, we can do doors, windows, anything to your home, we got you covered. We have a building license and electrical license. And as always, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and have a good day.